Hi there guys, this is Cassandra. I'm a riffle in time. I'm so glad you're here. Today is hopefully just gonna be a short, easy video. We're going over the like purgatory declutter box, or I think I heard recently like the timeout box. I think that's hilarious. <laughs> but there's really kind of like a process for me to move along a deck and little stages. So we'll go over that real quick. Very rarely do I get a new deck in that goes here. But if I do, it's because either I didn't do a good enough job kind of like looking and researching in the deck, we have a big disconnect for some reason, or again, I didn't like look into it enough and there's something about it that's like really against my beliefs or like it's really triggering to me in some way. So very rarely will that happen, but it has happened before where again, I, most of the time in that situation, it would be a deck that I didn't look up enough of, or there wasn't enough of that's happened before, like kind of like looking into a deck that just wasn't really out there. So very rarely will that happen, but usually I will start to work with a deck. Usually the beginning is really like exciting. I love working with a new deck, but if the excitement isn't there and it kind of falls to the side and gets on my shelf, I will notice it usually after a lengthy amount of time that it's like on my shelf and I haven't touched it. And once it hits that stage, I will be like, I will intentionally like, I need to use that deck. And then probably some more time will go on. I still haven't used it and I will set it on my desk and it's like, okay, last call. Use this deck right now or it's going in the timeout box, you know, <laughs> it's going in the, the purgatory. And so if during that time, either I haven't used it, one, or I've used it and I really have not clicked, it'll go in the box and then sit there for some time. Again, these are like longer periods of time usually too. Unless I have really determined that I just don't want it in my collection anymore for whatever reason, or a complete different option I didn't think about but is present here, is I have a open deck, a damaged box, like a second sale. If I have, in this case, I've had to get a new edition of something to fit the shop. That'll happen sometimes where like I used to sell a deck and then I, the new edition comes out, it's different and I have to have the new edition for like the photographs and stuff to be right and for me to display the right copy. And so if I get the new edition, I usually let the older edition go. Or if something moves from indie to mass market, like something like that, I usually don't need two copies of the same deck. So I will move it along in that case as well. But we have here kind of an array of those things. And usually I would like gift decks out first. Like, so if there's a deck that I know someone likes or I think would be really a good fit for that, I would like give it to the people. I now also have a space on my shop, the pre-loved section of the website where I will let decks go to. And that has made it feel better where like they're going to people who are looking for the deck and they're able to get it at a better price point because obviously I'm discounting the decks because they're used. And it's just like, it's been a nice way that I'm like making a deck that might not have been so accessible to someone before accessible. And I try to be really fair about what I price it at, even if it's out of print, like it is insane the amount of money that decks go for on like eBay. And I'm just like, I'm not willing to pay that. I don't think that it's just like, it's, I don't think it's something I can reason with for myself as worth it. Like maybe if like my financial situation was different and I had like free money like that laying around, like maybe I would feel differently. But in this current place in my life, like that is not a possibility for me. So I don't want to put someone else in that situation. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, so of the decks here though, I think I only have one deck that's out of print. And it's not a sure thing, that one. That one's not sure. Actually, we'll start there. The Lost Hollow Tarot. This is actually a, a deck that started this video. I realized like I'm probably gonna be doing a update to the pre-loved section soon. And I was thinking about like which decks would go after my collection videos and someone had commented on one of the videos, it's like, hey, if you are actually going to pass that deck along, like, would you consider me? Um, I really want it. And I'm like, yeah, of course, like if it does end up being there, like it'll be on the pre-loved section and I'll do an update to let everybody know what's like possibly going there. And obviously like I'll post about it when I do get it up. But the Lost Hollow is a deck that I really love. I love the art. 
I love the color. I, I, the tricolor for me is so, is such a, a good, the red, white, and black tricolor is it for me. But I was talking about this in that video is that some of the cards really are, I think it's because they're really like busy and like probably the pops of color too. They make me really like almost anxious. Like I get this almost like, I feel really overstimulated. I think I actually might've been the word I use. Like this card, I don't know what it, I don't know what it is. Some of the cards don't feel that way, but some of them really do. And I find that like there were times I would use it and I'm like, yes. And there's time I, I wouldn't and like I would use it and I would be like, no. And I realized when I was flipping through it for the video that really was the case that some of these feel really like, I just want to close my eyes. The artwork's beautiful. It, it really just this. <laughs> I don't know what that is, but that's part of some of the weird things that are me. <laughs> we'll do the next one. So this one, I, again, is not a sure thing. It's just like one I've been, a one I'm kind of, I need to see how many cards are of that. If like, that's something I can work through. This next deck though, it is not something I can work through. So this is the Literary Tarot. And this is pretty much a brand new copy. There's like a little damage in the like corner of the kind of like plasticky thing that they put in the box. But the, this is a touch thing. This is a texture thing. And <laughs> I can see it on the camera when this, it's, it's really, I can't explain sometimes things, but you can see me so you can feel. It just like the feeling of it really bothers me. Um, the edges are kind of almost sharp, plasticky. This is plasticky, like scratchy. Like when I, ugh. the backs have like this raised. The textures are not okay for me. It's <laughs> not. I don't like holding it right now. I love the art and the idea behind it. I was very excited. I waited two years for this Kickstarter to come in, but I cannot for the life of me stand the feeling of it. And I think there are like other decks that feel like this. Like, I don't think it's just this deck. I think there are other ones out there have felt like that. But for me, it's a no and I can't, <laughs> I just can't. And I didn't realize just kind of like Lost Hollow. I don't realize at first when something is like, necessarily like that until like I want like I'll, I'll just want to put it down and I don't again I don't realize it for the first like couple times it go through but then usually a lot of times when I realize it is if I'm talking to someone about it and they like mention or I, wa I watch myself when I'm recording and um <laughs> it doesn't feel good I have this like really soft blanket on right now I'm just gonna pet it I just can't really explain what that is but i just know i never want to touch it again and so for that that is definitely going in the pre-loved i think that if that deck came out in a different card stock give me a linen version i mean heck i would take even like a normal tarot like mass market kind of deck i wouldn't i don't care but that texture is a, a big no for me this has been in the timeout again or purgatory box before and i've taken it out i just don't use it i don't i don't really pull for an affirmation deck a lot and when i do i have the healthy vibes which i like frequently I, i'll pull for, from more frequently than i pull from this one and then to make matters worse i just got the roots to blooms or yeah i think it's I think that's the name but I just got that in which is very aesthetically like this it's like words black and white with some pops of like green but it's also an oracle deck so it has like a little guidebook with it which I would prefer over the affirmation so it does the affirmation like thing but like a little a little bit different a little more of which I, I like a little more from a deck so I think that one 
needs to probably finally move along because I think it's been in the last like three declutter videos or slash purgatory box updates. The next one, this one I have in the shop and this is like an extra copy of it. It's just an opened copy. There's nothing wrong with it. It's I, so sometimes I have like a personal copy of things and then I'll get like when I get it and I'll get a shop deck. My personal copy had just a little too much wear on it for me to be using it for photographs. So I have an open copy that I used in the shop for photographs and for like when I was taking it on events. It's been like barely shuffled, but it does probably have some, a little bit of scratches, but it's a pretty gently used copy. And it's already a deck that I'm not personally using a lot. So like, I definitely don't need two copies of it and it just needs a new home, that's all. Another deck that is for sure going, this is the Death Doula and don't panic. <laughs> this is the first edition of the Death Doula and this, one, this one's got a little bit dirty. It's a little bit dirty. White boxes tend to do that, especially it's like a kind of rose petal-y feel box, but there's like some like real I guess like a scratch on the box but for the most part like this is a very good condition guidebook the cards are in really good condition as well and it's a perfectly good copy it's just the first edition the guidebook has <clears throat> a little bit of changes in it and I think one or two of the cards also had a change in it and for that reason we're just going to turn the whole thing. <laughs> For that reason though, I had to get the new edition in the shop when I started stocking the new edition. So once they ran out of the first edition and started selling the second, I also had to shift and ebb to that. And so I'm always flowing with my creators and this is just my first copy of the Death Doula. And it's almost the same deck, but just not quite. I'm going to have to take updated photos because I want to have, like I take pictures of all the cards and post them on the website so you can see what you're buying. And when I do that, I need to have the accurate representation of said thing. So that's all that is. Now, moving on to a deck that I'm, I'm not sure. This is the Paper Oracle Lenormand. And one of the reasons that I don't use this is because I have not learned the Lenormand system yet. I did put it back in order for you because I'm so sweet. <laughs> I just have a, I don't, I don't have a Lenormand deck that I use. This is the only one I had and I just haven't been like really drawn to learn the system. I love Eric's art, which is why I have it. And I don't know. I just don't know about it yet. I hate that this sweet little deck just sits on my shelf. And this has been like, again, a significant amount of time. It's probably been a year since I've touched it. And even then, like, I, I don't even remember readings with it. And that's something that will say, like, be a little flag to me is if I can't remember a reading I've done with it. Cause I usually do have like at least one standout reading that I can remember. I do love like a few of these cards, like my little witchy card. Where's the cauldron? Oh, I love the cauldron. This is my favorite card, but I love Eric's art. It's there's nothing wrong with the deck. I just can don't have the Lenormand. And I feel like if I did get the Lenormand, like a Lenormand deck, I would get the green glyph collection and like have the set because I, Oh, and this, it has a like separate little guidebook for it. If you know the system, you don't even need the guidebook, but that's another hang up is like, it's a small deck. I would love to just throw up my bag, but that book is just, it's the size is off. So next up we have the Somnia Tarot, the illustrated edition. I think I am going to pass this along though. I really like, I had a big surprise when I got this deck that I liked it as well as I did. I wasn't sure how I was going to feel, but I I wanted to support the pre-order. I love the creator. 
and I wanted to obviously see what it was going to be like. I think it's really well done, but I just prefer the photography edition. And I'm going to pull the photography edition. If I'm going for Somnia, I'm gonna go for like the one photography deck that I have that I absolutely love. And I've said before, I really enjoy a photography deck. So having that one is like a big deal to me. And again, I'm not gonna choose this over. And I've, I've proven after of time and time again that I'm not going to. Now I do prefer this box, this guidebook, the card size and the card stock. So what I would love to see is Somnia upgraded, like the original upgraded to that because that checks so many boxes. We have three left. Let's actually let me check the time. Okay, I have enough time. My son gets off the bus soon. So I'm like, do I have enough time? This is the Tazima Tarot the Tasma African Tarot. And this is a deck that is finally going in the box after a really long time of not using. I've talked about it before and like, I think the possible of declutters, but I think it's, I think it's gonna be one of those, those decks that I don't know if anyone else has the, the problem, but there are some decks that I just, I'm scared to hurt. I don't know, like I get, I actually used to be really bad about this. So maybe you understand, maybe you won't. But for the longest time, when I had things, it's like a big deal to keep everything safe. I don't want to use something and like it go bad or like not have it anymore or anything like that. So I would get a new, new perfume and I wouldn't want to use it because it's like, I don't want to waste it. I would get a new shirt like this, I still have. If I have a white shirt, chances are I've never worn it because as much as I love the shirt and I love the color, like I love to wear white, I will stain it and I don't want to waste it. But then what I do is I don't use it. Now I've kind of done that with this deck because there's something about the, this and Love Oracle of Eden. Thankfully, Love Oracle of Eden, I was so drawn into and I had like a really instant connection with it. This, I don't have that same like urge. And again, I get caught up in like, I don't want anything to happen. You, I mean, look at these edges. I've babied this deck. I, I mean, you saw, I had to put it back in order. It's not like I haven't used it, but I've been really, really careful. Well, not back in order, but like upright. It makes me, it stresses me out, but I look at it and I love it so much. It's, I don't know. I really love the background colors. Like I love the gold. I, I love the black. I, I love the images. I think, I think they're so beautiful. I hate when I have a deck that like, like this, that just sits though. And I have not used it. I put it out one day to like make you know, it went into the, <clears throat> this is it, use it or lose it. And I didn't use it. I just, <clears throat> I want, especially a deck this nice, I want it to be used. The one thing I will say about this back <laughs> is it collects the fuzz. It definitely needs a lint roller. <laughs> Small Spirits Oracle is the next deck that is going into the purgatory. And I think it was the last time I did a video, it was going in there where I was saying I was going to pass it along. And guess who did it yet? Guess who pulled it back out? <laughs> First off, I love the edges. They're beautiful. I love the backs. I love the box and the, the guidebook. I love the color choices. I love the bugs. This all makes it sound like I would love this deck. Oh, I also, I enjoy the entries in the guidebook too. I don't know why I don't use it. This is actually one of my favorite cards. Ugh. I love that it's not all pretty bugs. I love that there's like black and white and color and maybe Maybe I love that in thought and don't love it in action. It does make it hard to pair for me. It's like to fit. And also since it is both, that might have me hung up on like what kind of energy and what I'm looking for. I don't know. 
I don't know what it is. Some of the ugly bugs I don't like. They, blah, 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 blah. But I do love that there is a like a variety and it's not all just like butterflies. And I mean, I would s absolutely get a butterfly deck because I love them. And like a butterfly and moth deck would be cool, but I don't know. Can't, it's, it's again, it's went through the stages and it's still here. And this next one, I think was in the, the battle out video as well, where like, I was like, okay, I'm going to get rid of it. And I'm going to keep this one and get rid of that. Well, it came out. This is the moon child. And this was one of the ones that actually, I think this one stayed. I think that was like what happened is I said this one was going to stay and I ended up getting rid of the age of Aquarius because I put, I put those two together. They both had kind of like moon star energy, like otherworldly. And this one's a little more rooted in like earth as well. It had some more grounded energy. And this is one of my first decks. Love the guidebook, which was what I was going to say when I was holding that. I don't know why I said it and said it, <laughs> but I also have like a kind of soft spot. This is one of my first five decks. There are some cards in it that I love, but I feel like more often than not, I don't love them. This is really cool. There's a couple like people I not personally know, but like this is Gabby Hirschstick, also the creator of Way Home and uh, Visions is in here, Bakara, which I think is, again, another reason I've kept it for as long as I have. But I do find that it's, the Hermit is another reason I've kept it. I really love this Hermit. I do find a lot of the times though, it's lighter and sweeter looking. Maybe, and this is, I've, I've said this before, I think I might enjoy the shadow version of this deck more because I like the sword suit the best. And it's really like the darker cards. Like I like, I like death, you know? But there's some cards I just, I don't know. And there's also some kind of, uh, what is it? I love, this guidebook is so good though. There's some extra cards in it that I, that just aren't it for me. This has like, oh, what is the, where are the extra cards? has the universe instead of the world, which isn't, but it's like how it is. I don't know how to explain it again. Maybe that like kind of star seedy vibe. And again, I kept this one because it was a little more earthy and a little more grounded into that, but I still find it a little too maybe ethereal. I don't know. I don't know words I'm looking for. I also have a few decks that probably are being considered to move in this direction. So decks that are moving from being on the shelves to being on my table. I probably have a couple of decks that I would like to do that kind of number with, but I think I'll save those for the next one and leave this where we are because I feel like that's a good amount. I have I have definitely wanted to like go back and look at my collection videos though and like see how I was talking about them because and like how excited I was because there are decks like there's so many decks that I'm so excited about to keep a deck that I'm not drawn to I don't use and that I'm not excited about is not it's not easy for me. <laughs> because I have a very limited amount of space. This is all the space I have. I'm not gonna have any more space. So when these sh shelves fill up, <laughs> a very small apartment, I don't have a lot of space for, for any more than what I have. So this is already kind of a lot. And since I have the shop, which is like, so people are like, well then don't buy any more decks. Well, I have the shop and I'm always going to be bringing in new decks so that I have new arrivals for like my customers. I am like 
also able to like show people new decks so I like to do that I like to make it like an accessible thing for people to see I also have a YouTube channel about tarot so like I have to at some point get new decks for like re to review and unbox and stuff so like I will obviously get new decks over time and so like my space in my collection for a deck that I'm not using is very limited and I already have quite a few decks that kind of fit that and I think it's just time for some of them to say goodbye or again there's a few there that are not quite there yet but definitely the ones that I've mentioned for sure will be on the the update I'm looking to do it soon so I will post in like the community section when I do make that live and I'll probably mention it in whatever video is like after that I'll probably like just mention it <clears throat> but I love you thank you for hanging out with me and taking a look at the decks that I'm just not excited about after watching two videos of me just like on 10 excited about my collection I thought it was a good balance to to see a video of me not excited about my collection and what happens and what it looks like when I'm not super into a deck. It's like, it's not easy for me to hide. Everyone's always said like, I don't have a good poker face. I like wear, I'm just very, very that. I'm just, it is what it is. <laughs> and you can see what it is, you know? But yeah, I love you. <laughs>